Welcome to Rat Lab, our religion, technology, and new media series. Today we will be talking about religion and technology in The Mandalorian. For those who've watched The Mandalorian, it becomes very apparent that our main character, Din, right, the Mandalorian, he refuses to take off his helmet, and he has a strange relationship to his helmet, as we will talk about, because this is actually very important. For looking at the show's understanding of our relationship to technology and how our relationship to technology is oftentimes alienating and isolating us. Okay, this world that we're introduced to in The Mandalorian is actually one of extreme violence. Star Wars itself, Star Wars, refers to a series of violent wars and violent encounters. And throughout the course of the two seasons of The Mandalorian, there is a lot of violence. In fact, every episode centers around some sort of conflict, some sort of armed or violent conflict. This is not a world that is one about peace and diplomacy and uh, talking and discussion. Although, as we're going to talk about, The Mandalorian is going to try to you know, use diplomacy, use discussion, uh, use collaboration as opposed to violence. But for the most part, this world is one where violence is rewarded and you have to be prepared for conflict at any time. Essentially, every episode revolves around some sort of conflict, some sort of really armed conflict where people are killed in every episode. And The Mandalorian in general, the two seasons revolve around him protecting a child from being uh, tortured and killed. This child, uh, Baby Yoda, or Grogu as we learn his name, it uh, is a very violent <laughs> show, even though it is on Disney+. Plus. Why is this important? Because we learn, too, that Din, in his early life as a child, his family were brutally murdered. And it's only a Mandalorian that saves him as his parents put him into hiding. Din himself has had to deal with a ton of violence and trauma as a child. In this world of violence, what have people done to escape it? Well, I argue that the Mandalorian, as we learn, is kind of a community or religious cult that is shaped around armor. Specifically, this armor is extremely technologically advanced and allows the Mandalorians to do various things, which we learn from the armorer who is a really badass character <laughs> who uh, repairs and makes Din's armor when it gets damaged. And she makes it even more technologically advanced and sophisticated and gives him more technological capabilities. Throughout, over the course of the show, the Mandalorian gets more and more cool gadgets as he goes on in his adventures. In this, this religious cult, the Mandalorians, they're really focused on their technologies, their, their armor, their protection. So much so that they refuse to ever take it off. In this world of extreme violence, the Mandalorians have essentially gone to their armor, their technologically advanced armor, to literally shield them from that violence. They've almost, I would say united or integrated their armor into their flesh in that they never take their armor off. In many ways, you can think about it as they have literally become their technologies or they have merged with machines because the world in which they live in is one of extreme brutality. They have receded back into their technologies, into their machines to protect them from that violence. And that is why Din refuses to take off his armor. He refuses to take off his helmet specifically. Now, why is this a problem, though, as they've sought to merge with their machines and their technologies? Why is it a potentially a problem? Well, one of the things that we explore over the course of the series is that Din's incapacity to take off this armor, to remove himself from his machinic kind of protections, hurts his or impairs his ability to form relationships with other people, okay? Specifically, we see this in various cases in that with his relationship with Baby Yoda or Grogu, at various points, the, in fact, the only times he takes off his machines 
his machinic protections, right, his technolog technologically sophisticated helmet and armor, is when he is most vulnerable. In the first season, a robot, another machine, takes it off. This is a key point. He only allows his helmet to be taken off by another machine in the first season when he has severe brain damage and he needs it to be repaired by another machine. In the first season, he only makes himself vulnerable. He only reveals his humanity to another machine who is going to fix his brain damage. <laughs> in the first season, he only allows himself to become vulnerable to another machine. However, over the course of season two, as he comes to form a relationship with baby Yoda, Grogu, in the very last episode, when baby Grogu needs to go with Luke Skywalker, he finally takes his helmet off for another living being and around other humans. In the season two finale, he ex finally exposes his humanity to other human beings which is very important. He makes himself vulnerable. What's the point here? Is that this armor, this, this reluctance to take off this armor, this, these machines that he's almost merged his flesh with, impairs his ability to be human and to expose his humanity to others. Because exposing your humanity and your weaknesses to others is how you build relationships to other people. This is why he has such a problem <laughs> with other Mandalorians taking off their armor. Specifically, when he sees Bo-Katan take off her helmet, he is shocked. <laughs> He's like, you cannot do that. You are a Mandalorian. <clears throat> and Bo-Katan basically says, well, you are actually <laughs> part of an extremist cult who has kind of like adapted or merged with their machines and are unwilling to even take off that machinic armor at any point. You've almost, Bo-Katan's kind of confrontation with the Mandalorian is very important because it exposes this idea that Din is basically compromised his humanity for his technological kind of reinforced armor. He's unwilling to expose his humanity. He has lost his humanity. And that's why the, um, Din and Bo-Katan have this standoff when they first meet, you can feel the tension and the tension is palpable because she is re revealing his unwillingness to expose his weakness. And again, that is his key weakness. When we look at the Mandalorian and Din's possible weaknesses, whenever you look at situations that he gets in that compromise his ability to protect Grogu, it's his unwillingness to admit his own humanity. That's his number one weakness that he has to overcome. And it's only through his relationship with Baby Yoda, Grogu, that he is able to do that. I think in uh, If the Mandalorian continues into future seasons, we're going to see this point explored further. Because it is an important point and one that speaks to our own day and age and our own society, which is why I think The Mandalorian is such a popular show. And that today we feel the same compulsion. We live in a very violent world. We live in a world where our technologies, guns, weapon systems, surveillance inflict a lot of damage and a lot of violence onto others. There is a capacity to retreat back into our digital, our virtual, our technological innovations, retreat back into our computers, our safe worlds where we're safe, where we're behind the screens of our phone or the screens of our computers that can protect us from the outside world. However, by doing that, we compromise our humanity or we compromise um, our ability to express our weaknesses and vulnerabilities to other humans, which impairs our ability to create relationships. And as a result, we feel alienated and isolated. We feel dehumanized in a way. So I think the Mandalorian testifies to the fact of how do we live in a world with our technological achievements how do we, instead of fleeing from the violence, use our technologies to expose our, humanities to our humanity to others, build our relationships to other people? That, I think, is the ultimate question for the Mandalorian and one that speaks to our own day and age and specifically our unwillingness to really make ourselves weak and vulnerable and share that weakness and vulnerability to others. 
that is ultimately what is at the core of our humanity. And as long as we're unwilling to engage with that, we will continue to live in very violent worlds since exposing our weaknesses and our, our humility, our modesty, that we are only human and deeply flawed and weak is ultimately what allows us to redress violence in our world. We have to redress our desire to retreat into our machines and refuse to take off our helmets. And instead, we have to embrace taking off our helmets from time to time. Thank you for joining us on Rat Lab in our religion, technology, and new media series. Like and subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook and Twitter pages so that you can stay abreast of new videos and updates. This is the way.